Action! He can't hear you. Oops. Not that one. You gotta tell him again. Sorry. I said one up. Savage Peace. Savage Peace, Uncle Eli. I just said one up. Savage Peace, boy. We already, you know what I'm saying? We already passed all the pleasantries. You know what I'm saying? It's actually show time now. And now y'all want to, you know what I mean? It's all right, though. You know what I'm saying? Anything else y'all want to do? <laughs> Goodness gracious. You try to run a, you try to well, run a well-run production around here. You know what I'm talking about? How are we ever going to make it to CNN? Oh, I don't know. Goodness gracious. Is CNN is a central news network. I don't know what it really stands for. Hmm, got to negotiate. Well, you get to that level, you got to negotiate. You know what I'm saying? He, my son, he said, "How much money you make at CNN? You got to negotiate that thing. You got to come in. You know what I'm saying? Let me see what your skin color look like. You a little light skin? You know what I'm saying? That's an extra hundred thousand dollars right there. You know what I'm saying? But it's the duck for being black. Two hundred thousand dollars off the top. You know what I'm talking about? So then you get a hundred thousand of that back. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to negotiate from there. And then you got to you gotta work your butt off, you know what I'm saying? Be funny, exciting. You got to compromise, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that you don't say nothing too threatening to what, you know what I'm saying, their power structure. You do everything you got to do. You know what I'm saying? They might have to mess with you. All right, that's enough. Let's get to it. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, okay. not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made obvious or manifest. Mm -hmm. I know, because you try to, you know what I'm saying? I see y'all be trying to catch on to it. I'll switch it up on y'all butts. You know what I'm saying? It's made obvious, which is manifest. You know what I'm talking about? That you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you can get, <clears throat> whether it be a gift of Nope. I'm gonna switch it. Let me think of something else to say. Whether it be a tangible gift of something that's material, you know what I'm saying? Like jewelry. Or a new car, or a new house, or you got all the flyers clothes. None of it matters. Everything can be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room. To the saints that ain't here, to the saints that can't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live yeah. let's go to where we at let's go to i gotta remix this sister sharon they over here trying to you know what i'm saying trying to anticipate what i'm about to say why don't y'all sit y'all butt down we're busy in that so listen we about to do uh we about to do a recap what we talked about last week y'all y'all know the opening who 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 know what we talked about last week that's what I want y'all to remember. King, huh? I know it. King what? We ain't even talking about no oh, darn king last week. Okay. Okay. We talked about Ezekiel. Uh-huh. Goodness gracious, boy. Yo, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Your vibration went all through the darn mic. What you got the phone attached to the mic? It was right <laughs> sitting on top yeah. of the darn mic? It was right next to it. That's crazy. That's crazy. She still ain't started yet, dude. So Ezekiel saw four people all connected. And what else? And the wing flapped so hard. I don't know if we went over this last week, but we did talk about these these individuals that you know what i'm saying and i think you remember in a couple of weeks ago a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago when we described them they moved around like that but what happened though where did ezekiel get taken last week that's good i think you i think you kind of remembering it where does Ezekiel get taken 
Yeah, very good. So he got taken to Jerusalem. And then what happened? What did he see? He saw a king. He did not see a king. What did he see when he went to Jerusalem? Most high God showed him a couple things while he was there. Who remembers what he saw? No, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about the wheel with the eyes on it? Yeah, no, nah, he, he saw that, but no, nah, that's not what I'm talking about. What did he see when he got taken to Jerusalem? Most high God showed him some things. Don't touch that. Y'all remember the most I got showed him a hole in the wall and then he looked inside of the wall. What did he see when he looked inside of the wall? No, didn't he see a whole bunch of idols hanging on the wall? Right? And then people was out there, these the leaders, the elders of the people. Remember, when he started having a vision, he was sitting in front of the elders. Right? He was sitting in front of the elders. All of a sudden, the most I got gave him a vision. You got to straighten that side. All right, boy. You know what I'm saying? The most I got gave him a, he gave him a vision. And after he gave him a vision, he was looking at it like, whoa. Then he took him to Jerusalem. Then he opened up the wall and he saw these same elders. Well, I ain't going to say the same elders, but he saw the elders. They was in this room and they worshiping all these other gods, got all this other wild stuff happening. Most high God didn't like it. Most high God showed him a whole bunch of stuff around Jerusalem, people breaking our law, but they were pretending like they served the most high God. Remember, he showed them people that was looking like they lived like it ain't no God. They mind is looking like, man, the most high God abandoned us. You know what I'm saying? He left. You know what I'm saying? He ain't real no more. Remember we were talking about that? Books say a fool in his heart say there is no God. Right? Books say that's a foolish thing to do. When you run your mouth, you get to put in your mouth, man, it ain't no God. Books say that's a fool. A fool would say some, something crazy like that. He said it's reckless to say something like that. Right? Because you could look at it. No, no person would open up their eyes and then look around with good sense in their head and just say all this stuff was random. Right? That's not scientific. It wouldn't be scientific to say that something that works so good together is random. It worked. Right? My boss's boss. One thing he always say that I like this saying. You know what I'm saying? I like this saying that he say. He say, look at the good number because, you know, we deal with numbers. He say, look at the good numbers hard, but look at the bad numbers even harder. Right? And you know what that means? He said, look, if something happened and it, I mean, I'm sorry. I said, no, look at the, look at the bad numbers hard. Look at the good numbers even harder is what it is. Right? So what that means is he said, listen, if something happens and it happens the way you expect it, the chances of that being right is wrong. Right? Generally, things don't happen the way you expect. Things don't work out perfectly. You know what I'm saying? You make a plan. And how often do you make a plan, stuff happen that you didn't plan for? That's normal, right? We planned a whole little birthday party, didn't we? Whole little birthday party. What happened as soon as we planned it? No, it started raining. Cold outside, start raining. We trying to light fire, do a little campfire, all that stuff. We looking like where all the darn rain come from. Rain for three darn days after that. We ain't even seen no darn rain all year, right? But that's what happens. You start making plans, stuff happens. Things don't play out. It don't. It don't. It don't happen perfectly. So the Most High God is kind of, kind of, kind of looking at us and saying, "Oh, you must be an idiot if you just look like you think <coughs> that somebody just evolved from 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 space spit." That's what they be thinking. They think somehow space created light. Somehow some water came about, and then from that water, everybody is populated. That don't make good sense. Not, not when these people still arguing what came first, the chicken or the egg. Because now you got to answer that question if you're talking about evolution. Like, did the little, the little tadpole evolve into an egg, and then that turned into a chicken? Right? Or did it just evolve into a full-blown chicken? Like when, when you born, you was a baby, right? And then somebody had to take care of you. So now the first human being that evolved from a banana, because that's, you know, that's the type of stuff they want you to believe. They believe you just evolved from something stupid. So when you evolved from a banana, the first form of a human being, was it a baby or was it a grown man? 
Because how that work? Oh, yeah. How you accidentally turn into a grown man, but then mm -hmm. also accidentally are able to have babies. All this is accident. Your face ain't crooked. Some of y'all faces are crooked, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if some people face it, be crooked. Some people, but I'm just saying, generally, faces don't be crooked. Face, you got one ear on this side and one ear on that side. Accidentally, all at the same time. If you rolling dice, right? Your Uncle T used to roll dice. You know what I'm saying? That boy used to roll dice. You know what I'm saying? Every time, I be, oh, here they go again. Boy, ain't nobody. Goodness gracious, this boy's in the corner. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know I'd be like, oh, my goodness, darn gracious. Well, I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, the girls over there with y'all. Man, what up? You know what I'm talking about? They rolling dice, right? Hi, T. T, what is it like to roll dice and then you get, like, two of the same dice? Do that happen every time? No. Not at all. And you talking about dice that got options. How many options on that thing? Six? Uh, six on each side, so you got like a lot of different variations. You got six on each one. Right? So that's your chances. That's limited chances. We talking about being able to roll the same thing when you got unlimited opportunity. Unlimited combina combinations that, that can occur with the human body and with all these different animal bodies. Remember, what they're trying to say is many variations of existing living being in a world you can look around and you just count them count as many different types of lions and tigers and ba everything that's living in the world that's the op that's your dot then you multiply it by two because you could do all this two times and then you roll that oh uh, you got millions of different sides and you mean to tell me all of the animals came out with ears on one one side and the other side. At the same time, you just accidentally evolved into all this stuff. Come on, man. You got to be a fool in your mind and say, it ain't no God. That's crazy. Don't make sense. Right. What? In second grade. See, that's what that, but that's that crazy stuff. These people do. he said in second grade, his teacher told him. That humans are cows? Oh, I wish you would have told me how to pull you out of her darn class so fast. I don't know what's wrong. Maybe she said humans are like mammals and there are mammal cows. Maybe oh, he's, shaking, he's shaking his head no quick, too. He's like, nah, she said what she said. <laughs> called, it, called my boy a darn heifer. You know what I'm talking about? That what it did. Call my boy a darn heifer. You know what I'm saying? But that that that's what these people teach us, right? But these people, a lot of these people that teach this stuff, they've been confused too. They bully them. You bully people into believing this foolishness, right? So that's what that's what the Most High God was dealing with. He was dealing with people that was in Israel, right, in Jerusalem, but in reality, they didn't even believe that that the Most High God was real. They pretended like they did, but they didn't. So after that, remember the Most High God took Ezekiel. He took him. He took him, and he said, "Listen." He showed him a a, a man in white linen. You know what I'm saying? And he had a pen in his hand, like something to write with in his hand. I like to think of it like a big old Sharpie. You know what I'm saying? And he went around and he started putting a mark on people's head. Remember, we talked about the mark was just like that. You know what I'm saying? When we look at uh when we look at the letter that's translated, you know what I'm saying, to make the word mark that we read mark, you know what I'm saying? That's the letter. So it said that he put literally what it says is if he put that on them. You know what I'm saying? And so he went and he put a mark on these people. And after he put the mark on the people, he sent uh, another angel that went out and they killed everybody, but they killed everybody except the people that had the mark on them, right? That's important for us to know. And when he start killing, when, where, where did he start? Didn't he start at the temple? He said, start at the sanctuary, right? So it's the people that pretend and show themselves to be closest to the most high God. That's where he going to start. It's important for us to know that important for us to know that right it's going to be the people that claim that they closest to the most high god is where where the most high god is going to start he's going to start in the midst of his people so that's why we get the punishment first and then after that it goes to the gentiles right that's why the books say to the jew first and to the gentile let's uh let's go ahead and uh pick up jeremiah let's do jeremiah chapter 27 oh my god is Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1. Okay. 
Jeremiah 27. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck. Send them unto the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Amorites, to the king of Tyre, and the king of Zidon, and by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem, unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. Right? Man, you remember this? We read this already. When Jehoiakim was in, you remember Jeremiah had to put uh he had to put yoke on his neck. And who remember what a yoke is? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Very good, boy. Very good. They got the bar that go around their neck. And it, it is a wooden bar, right? And a handle around their neck. What you was really supposed to use it for, you're supposed to use it for a cow, right? You're supposed to use it for ox. And what you would do is you would tie your cow into it. And then now your cow can pull a plow, right? So with the plow, what you're trying to do is usually we stand on top of that thing, right? At least that's what you know. What I'm saying how they depict it. I don't know how it was back in our, you know, what I'm saying our ancient days. But we, I like to imagine we stand on top of that thing, right? And then we got like this structure that we stand on top, and it digs a ditch inside of the dirt for us, somewhere that we can start planting the seed in. Right. So you got to dig, you plant the seed, then you cover the dirt again with the seed. So it starts digging this thing, but you got to pull it. Right. So you get you like an ox. You tie it to this contraption that you got that's going to dig for you. You hit the ox and the ox is trapped into a yoke. So whenever he start walking forward, it pulls what you riding on. So you go, wow. You know what I'm saying? They pull the plow and then now it's just digging for you based off of his work and off of his back. Right. So now Jeremiah had to put a yoke on to represent that off of our back, somebody else is getting benefit, right? So he's saying that all Jerusalem is going into captivity. That's what it represented for us. What? It looks similar to that, but no, not the same thing. So... So you got the, you got the, uh, you know what I'm saying? The yoke on Jeremiah, he giving a prophecy saying, yo, we about to get taken by Babylon. This is important though. I want y'all to see it, right? Keep going. Thus says the Lord to me, make thee bonds of yokes and put them upon thy neck and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab and to the king of the Amorites and to the king of Tyre and to the king of Sidon. By the hand of the messengers which came to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Command them to say unto their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, thus shall you say unto your masters, I have made the earth and man and beast that are upon the ground, and my great by my great power and my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And mm -hmm. now I have given all these lands unto the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And everything given to Nebuchadnezzar, his servant. Watch this, keep going. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. Mm -hmm. Then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, says the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with pestilence until I have consumed them by this by his hand. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor look, to your look, Watch what he say. He say, hearken not to your prophets, nor to your what? Nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers. Which he said, hearken not to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your sorcerers. Right? Nor to your enchanters. Right? So he said, look, I want to cover all bases. It's a lot of people out there that act like they got some answers for you. Don't listen to them. Stay away from the court, boy. He said, don't listen to them. Right? It's the same thing that we're dealing with now. Wake up, Zar. Right? It's the same thing that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with a whole bunch of people that's trying to tell us stuff 
trying to make us believe that they got the right answers, trying to make us believe that they got the science or they got the spirituality that can lead us somewhere that we've never been before. Stay away from the court. Sit up on the couch. Right? We can't hearken to these people. You got to look at the book. And these people are going to call you stupid and crazy for looking, listening to the book. You got to understand that. You got to expect that. These people are going to look at you like you are crazy. The book, that thing was written thousands of years ago by white men. It's what they're going to tell you. Right? That's what they mind. Gonna, in their mind, that's, that's the truth. That's what they think. That's what he say? Because, you know, our people, they ain't taught us nothing. He don't know that that came from his people. Came from his ancestors. Right? But we don't know where we are from. To a brother like me or one of the other brothers that the Most High God gave the knowledge to come through and kind of teach you like, oh, no, nah, well, actually, you know what I'm saying? You're not just like some, some African. In our mind, we used to have rings on our necks, stretching our necks out and big old things in our earlobe like we be seeing in Africa right now, running around with a darn handkerchief around our darn genitals, scratching our darn butts, running around like this, you know what I'm saying? With a lion on one side of us and a gorilla on the other side of us like we darn Tarzan. That's what we think in our mind. That's what we think we came from. Don't, don't talk to like a black power. A black per power person think we came from Egypt. They think all of us was kings and queens. Not everybody a darn king and a queen. Don't you know, brother, you came from kings and queens? Everybody was a king and a darn queen? What nation was that and how that thing work out? Right? These people believe a whole lot of stuff. They believe everything except the truth. We don't come from no darn kings and queens. We come from Israel. We come from what? We come from we come from being Hebrews, Israelites. Right? We came from the people that the Most High God, only people that the Most High God selected. How do you people make us feel like we came from nothing and we actually came from the only people that the Most High God picked out of all the all the nations? It's a whole bunch of nations on earth. There's only one that the Most High God was like, them. We in slavery in Egypt. Most High God say, them. And pull us out and gave us birth. It was the birth of our nation. Right? But they would have us believe that it's not. These people are going to call us crazy for believing this book. They're going to say that we stupid. They're going to say it don't make no sense. They're going to say that thing is archaic. The women going to say that's male part patriarchy. You know what I'm saying? The black, the black men gonna say that that, you know what I'm saying, that's that's slave religion. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna say all types of stuff. They're gonna throw a whole bunch of stuff at you, right? And you gonna have to look stupid for it. You're gonna have to look crazy. You're gonna have to look stupid. You gotta let these people talk to you like this inside of your faith. You have to read this book, and you're gonna feel like, man, they kind of making a good point. Right? And you still gonna have to believe with this or not, right? Or or you know, you can go with them. And you can look smart. Be applauded by the world. And have your butt right in hell. Right? Because that's how this world twists you up. They got people that, that got all the tricks in the trades. They make you feel like that they got the source of the information. The book is telling us, do not listen to them. Uh, grab uh, Isaiah for me. Grab Isaiah chapter uh, 8. This is Isaiah chapter 8. I want verse mm, uh, 12, 18. maybe? 13? Mm, I said 18, but 12 might be good. 18? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. That That is what I want. Well, I probably want, I probably want 12 too, but uh, 18 is, I think, what I want. Yeah, because I think 20 is what I really want. Yeah, 20 is what you want, but 18 is... This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Let's see what the book say. After that, give me Isaiah, I mean, uh, give me Ezekiel chapter 13. You want, we'll do 16. The 16. This is yeah. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Watch what the book say. Bind up the testimony. Watch this. He said, bind up the testimony. What is he talking about when he say bind up the testimony? What does that mean? What's another way of saying Bind up the testimony. Seal it up. Wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? Close it up. Yeah, he's saying close up what? What's the testimony? The scripture. He's saying close up the word. 
right? Seal it up. Close it up. Bind up the testimony and do what? Seal the law among my disciples. Right? Seal it and keep it with the disciples. These people still calling themselves Muslims and Christians, Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Baptists. You know what I'm saying? Pentecostals and, and darn uh, Catholics. You know what they're calling yourself? Everything except what the Most High God called you. He said, seal it amongst who? Seal the law among my disciples. Zakari, wake up. Get up. Keep going. And I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob. And I will mm -hmm. him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwells in Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And when they shall say unto you, Speak unto them that have a familiar spirit, and unto wizards that peep, and that mother. Right? This, he's saying the same thing here. He's saying, listen, they're going to tell you, go speak unto people that got familiar spirits. People with familiar spirits, those are the ones that be like, oh, your grandma died 17 years ago, huh? You miss her. Well, let me connect you with her in the, in the, in the other universe, in the other world. You know what I'm saying? Then they get to, they get to, hum, dong, boing, day, um, day. you know what I'm saying? Spreading smoke in the darn air. Yeah, yeah. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Then they're going, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, wait, I hear them talking. He be making a fool out of you too. They be sitting there. I'm connecting with them. Wait, everybody quiet. I'm connecting. And all of a sudden, I am your grandmother. I miss you. This that another. <gasps> Whoa. Did you hear that? That was your grandmother speaking to you. Right? See, most of you people be lying. There's some real ones out there too, though. You know what I'm saying? Real ones and you know what I'm saying? The real ones, you know what I'm saying? The real ones. Some some of these people really know what they're doing. That's why you gotta be careful. Right? But a lot of these people are just making a fool out of you. Either way, the most I said, God said, don't listen to it. Right? He said, he said, right, read it again. What do you got? None. He uh, <laughs> he don't he don't think that stuff real. So I told him I show him the book. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff we look at now. A lot of people fake. Everybody lying now. The world, even even the liars back in the ancient times, even the liars were more honest than the liars now. Right? Everybody lie about everything now. You can't get the truth out of people. People just be lying just to lie. You can say simple stuff and somebody will lie. You just go online. You just go online and it just be simple stuff. It, you know what I'm saying? I saw a post. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I saw a post about uh, Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? Joe Biden, he was uh, he was giving a speech about something. And I'm reading the comments. And the comments were like, well, actually, you know what I'm saying? He's saying, he, you know what I'm saying? The, the speech that he's talking about, he's actually talking about X, Y, and Z. I'm like, why would like what why do you even have to talk about it? Like what where's the lie? They just lie. They just they just random comments just lie. You know what I'm saying? For no reason. You know what I'm saying? That's just the world we live in. It's just everything is a lie. You turn on the news, they lie. You turn on the basketball game, they lie. Like how you say LeBron James the greatest of all? Lies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like who even told you to lie like that? That's crazy. Ain't even no reason to lie. Ain't nobody even asked you that question. Lying though. You know what I'm saying? How you say Kobe not the greatest of all time? Exactly. Mm, debatable. I don't like the word Kobe stole his moves. Kobe improved on all of Michael Jordan's moves. But you know, that's a different story for a different day. You know what I'm saying? But you dealing with liars today is the point. And these people are the ones the Most High God is telling you don't listen to them. So then our question becomes, how do we sort the truth from a lie? How do we know when somebody lying to us versus when somebody being honest with us? And the book is about to tell us. Watch this. And when they hey, shall Sister say unto you, stop it, peace. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, mm -hmm. should not a people seek unto their God? Look, the, the Most High God says, shouldn't a person seek unto their God? So in other words, you seeking all these other people and you trying to get spiritual answers from them, then what does that make them to you? Most High God looking at it like, oh, you might as well be seeking out your God. Because this is the type of stuff, Most High God is like, this is the type of stuff you should be seeking me for. But you seeking them. You might as well make them your God. 
or whoever they serve, you might as well make them your that make that your God. Right? He said, should not a people be seek upon their God? Keep going. For the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. He said, look, to the law and to the testimony. This is how we know when somebody lying and when they not. We have to compare it to the law and to the testimony. When we say testimony, we're talking about the word. Right. When we say law, we talking about the word of God that came from Moses, first five books of the Bible. Right. We have to compare it to the law and to the testimony. If when people are running their mouth, it don't line up with these, this word. Then there is no light in them. In other words, there's no way for these people to guard, guide you through darkness. If you're looking for somebody to dark, guide you through spiritual darkness, there is no way for them to do it unless they line up with this word. So, yes, people are going to call you stupid. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to say you gullible. They're going to say you fall for anything. They're going to call you sheep. They're going to call you all types of stuff for reading this book and believing this book. Right. But at the same time, the book is telling you. Mm, if people ain't talking according to this book, it's because they really don't know what they're talking about. So now we got to make the decision of what do we want to go with? The dude that's been living for about 23 years and been cheated on and dumped by every girlfriend that he ever had. Or the book that's been here for thousands and thousands of years and ain't nobody been able to prove it wrong yet. You know what I'm saying? You peel back the curtain on some of these boys, these boys that try to call themselves, you know what I'm saying? Some spiritual leaders and think that they, you know what I'm saying? You peel back, you look at their life, look at the decisions that these boys made. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You get tricked by everything. Your job trick you. Your friends trick you. Your girlfriends trick you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody trick your darn butt. Everybody getting over on you. They call you every every time around Christmas. They call you every year and they say, hey, uh, the IRS. You know what I'm saying? The IRS says that you owe them this. Just send $300 to this line and we can fix it for you. Your butt gets scammed every time. And you're going to sit here and, and try to talk to me about some universe burning sage in my darn face you know get that stuff out of my darn face i'll smack you and burn your darn lip with it you people be darn making up stuff and i'm supposed to just go along with it i'm supposed to i'm supposed to you know what make me mad i'm supposed to pretend like they have they have just about the same amount of a chance of being right as i do i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to pretend that they theory is equal to mine i'm reading the book i got all this evidence for what i believe i'm supposed to act like Oh, when you just pop up and think, oh, well, you know, a monkey evolved into a human being. I'm supposed to act like, yeah, that holds the same weight is what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe he's right. Maybe I'm right. How do you know? You never really know. No, yeah, you kind of know some stuff is stupid. I'm about to hear and play with these people, try to act like y'all got the same chance of being right that I do. Nah, I'm 100% right. You know why? Because the book right. Right? Only because the book right. So if a person don't speak according to this law, don't speak according to this testimony. And listen, we that's why when we read the law, we read the law. Y'all remember whoever was around when we was reading the law? We read the law. I can tell you, I can tell you, y'all probably not going to find any teacher of the book that'll sit and just go through the law. We read the law. And guess what? We're going to read the law again when we get through the book again. Right? Because it's important. The book is telling you to the law and to the testimony. That's how you understand when somebody got light in them. People don't know no darn law. These boys be running their darn mouth. This is, uh, this is uh, Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel chapter uh, 13, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 1. These people don't even be smart. They lie to us about everything. Got us looking up to people that's not even, they not, these people not even remotely intelligent. You know what I'm saying? They just know certain things and they know how to manipulate you. They know how to make you feel like you less than them. You ain't less than these people. A lot of these Lord. people that talk about us and put us down and oppress us right now, these people going to be, they going to be begging to serve us. You understand? A lot of these people are going to be 
begging to serve us just to escape the death and the judgment that's going to be coming to their people. Right? And it's going to be good for them to serve us. And we're going to do it righteously. We ain't even got it in our heart to do nothing like they did to us. We ain't even got it in our heart to start to whip nobody on their back and put them in, put them in chains, and chains and chop off their darn leg if they try to run. We ain't even got it in our heart to do nothing like that to no people. Our law would tell us you did something like that to somebody, you got to let them free. These people would chase us, capture us for trying to run and chop off our leg as a result. Our books say if we try to do some foolishness like that, people, they'd be free for their legs. Say that's our law. That's law. That's a righteous law. These wicked people. They're going to have a nerve to, to feed us back. Lie. You got to have a lie. Listen, when when your whole when everything you do is unrighteous, the only way to support it is with a lie. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy. So this is Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 1. He said, The word of the Lord came to me, or the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, uh, saying unto me, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Right? So, so it ain't just these white folks that got the darn crystals, and, and it ain't just the, you know what I'm saying, the, the Middle East and Asian people that got the darn Buddhas. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just the Native Americans that, that burning sage and doing all that extra stuff. It ain't just them. Guess what he said? The, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, don't he? Ain't that what he said? Prophesy against the prophets of Israel. That's our people. Right? It's our people that, that, that also are going to prophesy lies to us. And the Most High God is telling Ezekiel, talk to them too. Watch this. Keep going. Thus says the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. That follow what? Their own spirit. When these people be walking around, oh, God, I feel like God told me this or I feel like God told me that. Oh, God, oh, God told me not to do that. These people, the average of them is following their own darn spirit. You just don't see it in the book. You don't see that in the book. You know, we didn't read through. We all the way up to uh, we all the way up to Ezekiel and Jeremiah at this point. At no point did we find somebody who just got a private vision or a private message from God telling them about some silly mundane stuff. Oh, yeah. Pick that purse. It's your favorite color. Apparently, that's what God told you to do. We just don't see it. Everything that we've seen so far, the most high God talking to somebody, man, listen, it's big business. Watch this. Keep going. These prophets be liars. These people be liars when they talk about God. They follow in their own spirit. It be their own little energy that they got going on in them, that they follow in their own belly, they follow in their own mind, their own imagination, and they want to talk as if they speaking for God. You can't fall for it. Books say don't listen to them. Keep going. Oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Stop. You have, you have not gone up into the ga gaps. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Do you know they what he mean by that? We ain't even been put on. He said, you did not go up in the what? In the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the Before battle. Before that, in the day no, he Lord. said, you have not gone up in the what? Into the gaps. Like you didn't, you didn't repair the breach. You didn't, you didn't bring the people to me. You didn't close the gap from unrighteousness to righteousness. When Moses, when Moses gave us the commandments, he told us, look, in three days, it's about to go down. Don't touch the mountain. Then what did he tell us after that? He told him to put a gate up. He told him to put a gate up. What else? Uh, Where was the most high God? Using the mountain. But we couldn't touch the mountain. Mm -hmm. So how in the world we are going to get to God? Good. You had to hear him speak. Moses had to be the, be the intercessor. Intercessor. I'm saying that right. So there was a gap, wasn't it? It was a gap between us and God. And guess what Moses had to do? What was the gap? He had to stand in the gap. That's what all these prophets are called to do. The, the prophets are called to stand in the gap between the most high God and the people. 
somebody who leads according to the word of the most high God is called to stand in the gap between the most high God and the people. That comes with a sacrifice. That comes with a responsibility. That means that you don't get to just do whatever you want to do. And that's what the most high God is saying. He's looking like, man, y'all ain't stood in no gap. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't stood in the hedge. <coughs> y'all just doing whatever y'all want to do. Y'all not sacrificing nothing. Y'all not trying to bridge the gap. Y'all not trying to make sure that people are connected to the most high God the best way you can. Y'all just running y'all darn mouth. Watch this. Keep going. These people, all seen, these people run their darn mouth. They have all seen, of them is lying. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord. Uh, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord has not sent them. And they have they be running their mouth talking about God said it. God told me and the most high God haven't sent them. I'm telling y'all, this is talking about today, our people. We ain't even talking about, we talk about the Gentiles already. We not even talk about the Gentiles that burning sage and doing all this up. We talking about these people that think God is talking to them and every time they wrong about whatever they say. Somebody get telling you, as soon as somebody run their mouth talking about, man, God told me not to do that. Now you know they are sinning. You th so what you're doing, what you admitting to me is that God told you something and you didn't do it. Why would I listen to you in the first place? I don't even know why you would let, why would a person let that come out of their mouth? Go, oh, God told me. Now I know I shouldn't. God told me I shouldn't have did it. Did it anyway. Okay, so what you tell me is you definitely are sinning. Because either one or two things happen. God ain't told you nothing and you running your darn mouth. You're a sinner. Right. Or God told you something and you didn't do what he told you to do. And clearly you knew he told you you a darn sinner. That's why all you got to do is sit back and pay attention to these people. These people tell you who they are. It ain't no way out. It ain't no way to get around the most high God. Nobody gets by ever. Nobody gets by. All you got to do is be patient and just watch. Pay attention. Keep reading the scripture. Eventually, everything gonna show itself out. These people can't get by. Don't, ain't nobody the slickest liar. You know what I'm saying? Slickest liar ain't getting past God. That's a fact, right? You ain't found one time where Satan was able to trick God. They wouldn't even try. Wouldn't even wouldn't even attempt to. Satan, you know what I'm saying? In the Book of Job, when Satan was, you know what I'm saying, went up and talked to the Most High God. You didn't see him one time trying to trick God into doing nothing. Matter of fact, most high God might have tricked him. You know what I'm saying? For, and God forbid that I say this, but most high God might have tricked him to say that. You know what I'm saying? Tricked him into doing something. Most high God looked at him like, yeah, man, you consider Job. You know what I'm saying? He in full control. Trying to figure out why we think we can lie to God. Or lie to God's people that know his word. Can't lie to me. Keep going. They have made others to hope that they will confirm the word. Mm -hmm. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord says it, abide, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord God. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity. And that divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall these they people listen. These people don't pay attention to this stuff. It's important. You have to these people that run around and they call themselves it's some it's some of these boy calling themselves apostles. They call themselves prophets and apostles, exalting themselves when they have no prophecy. And the most high God did not send them. But they exalt themselves as if they somebody just because the most high God gave them a little understanding of the word. You get a little, listen. If the most high God gives some of these boys the understanding that he gave us, these boys would exalt themselves in a second to be apostles and prophets. There's some of them that call themselves God. There's one of them, look, one of them that got a little understanding, he took his butt over to Israel, built a whole community, and started calling himself. Yahuwah ben Yahuwah. In other words, the Most High God's name, son of the Most High God. Right? He started calling himself Yahuwah. 
That's nuts. But that's how these people exalt. When he give you a little understanding, these people will exalt yeah. themselves and lift themselves up and make themselves out to be something that they not. They do it quick. Let the boy get a little bit of this understanding that we got. These people would lose their darn minds. Get to lying about the oh, I was a pro oh, I saw Jesus last night. Jesus walked me through a dark valley. And he said unto me, everybody on this side of the church, just give me a couple extra dollars. Just lying, robbing everybody. Right? We got to make sure that our head is on straight. And that we make sure everything adhere to the book, no matter what it look like, that the deception is high. That's why I don't fall for the bells and whistles. I don't care how you, I don't care how you present yourself. I don't care if you pull up and you drive a fancy car or you in an ugly car. I don't care how it's presented. They just had a, uh, they had a viral uh, video that went on um, social media and it was a pastor and the pastor you know what I'm saying? He came out, and I think they was, uh, what song was it? They was playing one of the songs back from our day. It was, uh... Mary Mary. It was, no, it was, uh, it was Swag Surfing. You know what I'm saying? But this was a church. You know what I'm saying? So they were sitting there, everybody in the church, like, it looked like a club. You know what I'm saying? Boy, I'm Swag. I'm surfing. The whole thing just rocking. That thing looked tight. How the kids say that thing looked lit. You know what I'm saying? So I was looking at that thing, I was looking like, oh, okay. But somebody sent it to me. They looking like, man, can you believe this? You know what I'm saying? They wanted me to provide commentary on it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the 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 whole church, they got the video. So it start off at like the top of the church. You know what I'm saying? It's a big old stadium church. They start off at the top and everybody rocking. You hey, can look, hear the Sharon, music Sharon playing. But I already knew what you was talking about. Huh? I said Sharon Christian, but I already knew what you was talking about. <laughs> yeah, so they go and they pan through and they showing them rocking back and forth. And all of a sudden, they get to the stage. And as they get to the stage, the pastor coming out, he already sweaty. You know what I'm saying? Then he get to the podium. And I think he say something, and then the video cut off. And so they sent me, you know what I'm saying? A couple people sent me the video, and they like, man, can you believe this? I don't fall for the bells and whistles. Guess what I said? I look like, I don't see nothing wrong with it if he preached the word of most High God. If he cut, listen, swag surf all you want. If you come out and you teach people the word, I don't care. Where the book say you can't swag, sir? If you show me a commandment saying you can't swag, sir, then that's a problem for me. This is how people get, I don't judge too far left or too far right. The only thing I care about, I don't care about none of the extra stuff. I don't care about what you do or what you don't do. The only thing I care about is, is it according to the word? Well, I'm going to sit here. I'm here and spend time stressing out about somebody darn swag surfing if the word ain't preached right. If I got a problem with you, it ain't the swag surfing. It's the fact that you lying to the people. What swag surfing got, got to do with the word of most our God? That thing completely separate to me. I like to listen to a little hippity hop too. You know what I'm saying? What y'all gonna you know what I'm saying? What you gonna say? I'll come out here and listen to a little bit of hippity hop. I bet you what though, whatever I put on, I bet you I I preach the word. One thing's never gonna get by. Y'all willing, as long as I'm living, I'm never going to teach nobody no darn lies. Never going to teach nobody no darn lies. That's crazy. We're going to teach the book, even if it condemn me. Book got to be taught. And you're not going to fool me. You come out here on the, the opposite end. You know what I'm saying? You got on your darn purple darn dress. You know what I'm saying? With ICUCP on it. You know what I'm saying? You got your darn hat on. You know what I'm saying? Walking around with a... These boys be hey, we're having the staff. You know what I'm saying? They be having the wooden staff. Walking around, a horn in the other hand. And they sitting there, hear ye, hear ye. You know what I'm saying? They got a crowd of brothers. Hear ye, hear ye. You know what I'm saying? They look like the Most High God. The Most High God says you are a Gentile. I be like, oh, my goodness. These boys done lost their darn mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong with these boy? That ain't going to get me either. But guess what? You do it all you want. Are you teaching the word of the most high God? I ain't got no problem with y'all do. I don't, I don't care how you dress. I don't care nothing about you as long as it don't offend the most high God. If you dress in a way that offend the most high God, well, that got that. 
But if nothing that you're doing is defending the most high God and you teaching people according to the word, that stuff is none of my business. Our problem is these people get us with the bells and whistles. Sometimes you like a little swag, sir. And so, you know, you look at a church like that, you see, you know what? That's the type of church I want. Because some of these churches be too uptight. It ain't even that serious, but they swag surfing. That seemed like a cool church. So now it's not about the word. You know what I'm saying? And then the person that come, you know what I'm saying, that look at that and they offended by the swag surfing. They look at the ICUP. You know what I'm saying? They look at the alphabet boys. Them boys beating on their chest like darn gorillas. You know what I'm saying? They look at that thing. They look like, now that's militant. That's what a God is a God of structure. This, that, and other. Let me go. They don't care nothing about the word. It's not even about the word. It's just about how it looks. Listen, I like militant too. I like the way the I like the way the black Muslims move. You know what I'm saying? The nation of Islam. Oh, I like our them boy. You know what I'm saying? I like when Farrakhan come out and put that boy in this glass box where you can't snipe that boy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got the boys in the black suit and the bow tie walking around. Them boys know karate and security. I like that type of stuff. Me personally, if I could choose, listen, if I could choose how to structure my religion, I definitely uh, choose like the nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? If I had to look at all the religions and it was just up to me and I didn't know nothing about the righteousness of the most High God, I'd be like, nation. I'd be just like the rest of these boys, nation of Islam. That's why all these people, a lot of these people are nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the celebrity, black celebrities, so a lot of them nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? Because you look at it, it's like, that, that's some nice structure there. You got your own security team. You know what I'm saying? You don't play none of the darn foolishness. They be full throated in what they talk about. They hypocrites behind closed doors now. But don't nobody know about that, so we don't leave that alone. Right? So of course that's what you would choose. But when you know the righteousness of the most high God, when you know the wisdom of the book, what do I care if you got why do I care if you got security? That don't make no sense to me. If I know the righteousness of the book, all I care about is, are you teaching the people correctly? That's the only thing that matters. Are you telling people the truth? Everything else is bells and whistles. Keep going. Let me see what else it got. You might be on mute. Brother T, you, you know what I'm saying? You're on mute. Are you talking? My bad. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others dabbed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which dab it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing wherewith ye had dabbed it? Therefore, thus says Yahuwah God, I will even rent it, with the stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So mm -hmm. will I break down the wall that you have dabbed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be dis discovered. And it shall fall, and you shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have dabbed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that dabbed it. Right. So he gave a picture of a wall. He said, basically, what he's saying is the people that be sitting here lying to the people like, yo, everything going to be all right. God loves you no matter what you do. All these lies that these, these people tell us, he's saying what you're doing is like building a wall and making a person feel like, oh, look, this wall will protect you. But they did it. He called it untempered mortar. So they did it with material that's not going to hold. Right. You ever look at like a brick wall? And you can see the brick, but in between the brick is that like gray concrete, right? So imagine that gray concrete is not really concrete. Like imagine that's like cake batter. You know what I'm saying? So they put a whole bunch of bricks up and they put cake batter in between it. And they told you, oh, don't even worry about it. Just let it dry. You know what I'm saying? It's going to hold tough. You know what I'm saying? That thing never, that thing never quite dry. It's just like, mm, it's kind of spilling. Like, what is that? And then you taste it, you looking like, that thing's good. Why my bricks got darn cake batter on it? 
right? And all of a sudden, the wind started blowing and it started raining. And the cake batter at the bottom just started melting off and falling down. The next thing you know, you wake up in the morning, your whole garden is messed up. The bricks is falling over because it ain't going to hold. But somebody made you believe that they built a sturdy wall for you just for it to fail you. And that's exactly what happens to us. These people will tell us there is no God. Right? Or these people will tell us God loves you no matter what you do, brother. So, listen, the first thing you, this is, oh, this is the biggest lie these people will tell you. The first thing you have to do, brother, is forgive yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, what in the world? I ain't never seen nothing. That, one thing I've never read one time in this book is anything about forgiving yourself. That has to be the biggest lie. That concept don't even make sense. What? Okay. When you in debt to somebody, right? That means you owe them. How do you owe yourself? You can't owe yourself. That's not a real concept. But these people have you feeling like just because you feel bad about something and you holding yourself accountable for something, they look at that ass. See, you haven't forgiven yourself. So now they talking you out of the very thing that might save you. The thing, the very feeling that might change your behavior, they talk you out of it. Be like, no, nah, you got to let that go. You got to forgive yourself. You can't keep holding that stuff over your own head. These people are darn, listen, they father is the father of lies. Keep going, watch this. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have doubted it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that doubted it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, says the Lord God. There is no peace. The most High God going to tell you it ain't no peace and you're going to come back and tell people it's peace. He told you it is no peace. I think it's done. It's over. Jerusalem about to be taken over. Ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. All y'all going to have to sit in it. There is no peace. Keep going. Watch this. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. And say thus, says the Lord God, woe to the women that sew pillows into all armholes and make her kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for, hand, for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live? By your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows wherewith you hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because right? with lies you have made so the even, the, the even the women, right? The women was walking around and you had women prophets, but they using all these weird methods, right? To try to make it seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no, you're going to be all right. Just pay me in barley and pay me in grain. Right? And then we would fall for it. And we would follow, you know what I'm saying? We would follow the little witchcraft that they doing. You know what I'm saying? And we would believe in it. And in the process and doing that, they're hunting our souls. Right? This stuff is no different today. All this stuff in Christianity, man, that stuff is hunting your darn souls. Making you feel like you're all right. Watch what he say after that. Watch this. Because with lies, you have made he said, with heart, lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad. You have made the heart of righteous people sad. He said, with lies, you have made the heart of the righteous people sad. Watch this. Whom I have not made sad. But he said, God didn't make those people sad. Watch this. And strengthen the hands of the wicked that should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. He said. But then you strengthen the hands of the wicked people to make them feel like they shouldn't turn from their wickedness. And that is exactly what we deal with today. What else do you think it is if the book is telling you turn from some sin? 
Turn from like most of the sin. Turn from the sin that you know about. It's a turn from all sin. Right? The book gives you a list of things that will not enter into the kingdom. And you would have a, in the New Testament, they tell you this. And then you'll have a good Christian come right behind you and say, you know what? Look, brother, I know you feel, look, it's only going to happen. Oh. I want to just any of y'all go to a Christian church. Just do it for sport. Go to a Christian church and just talk. Just start talking about how important it is for you to get it right. Just tell them like, man, I really, really, really just get this right. I don't want to sin no more. I don't want to make no more mistakes because if I do, most high God to send me that. And I messed up last weekend. Oh, I just can't let that happen again. Just go in there real stressed out about it. And see how many of them are going to tell you, you're right, brother. Keep at it. Keep strong. I'm going to pray for you. Keep at it. And how many are going to tell you, listen, listen, listen. Listen, God loves you even though you messed up. He knows you're going to mess up. That's why he sent his son. That is the lie that they're going to tell you. And how do you think that feels? That's a wicked person talking. Man, look, man, I'm trying to get it together, man. I don't want to sin no more. That's wicked, right? Because I sinned. So that person who struggling with sin, I strengthen that person by telling them, oh, God ain't tripping. God loves you either way. Whether you sin or don't sin, God's still going to accept. Come as you are, bro. Now I feel more strong in the way I'm living. So the wicked person is strengthened. But take the righteous person in that same situation. Mm, I ain't sinning. Ain't going to happen. I ain't sinning this long. I like to keep the law. I'm not doing none of this fool. I turned away from everything that's going to keep me out of the kingdom. We don't play that and we can't do it. And then they try to help a brother and be like, look, brother, you got to turn away from all your sin. Say that in front of a Christian. It's impossible to turn away from all sin. See, that's legalistic. How do you think that make that righteous man feel? Sad. That righteous man now got to sit here and question, dang, maybe I do got it wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe it ain't that serious. Maybe I am taking it too seriously. Maybe I shouldn't be keeping the law. Maybe it is done away with. You make the righteous person sad and you make the wicked feel strength, strength, strength in his wickedness so that he won't turn away from it. That is evil. And that is what we deal with daily. These people try to make us believe that the book is wrong. When the book is the only way to life. They try to make us believe that the book was written by a white man. When this book was written by our very people. They try to flip everything that's true. Turn it into a lie and convince us to believe a lie. So that the lie strengthens us. And walking in wick wickedness, it makes us feel weak and sad when it comes to righteousness. We can't fall for it. If they don't speak according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Repeat that to yourself when these people get to talking to you. Don't judge these people by no darn swag surfing. Don't judge them by no darn purple dresses with fringes at the bottom. Right? What we want to judge them by. Is the word of the most high God. Is it in the word or not? That is it. I don't care about how, how you have complete. Listen, be clear. As long as you doing what the Messiah say, everybody has complete freedom over everything they want to do in their life. You want to fly planes and jump out of planes for a living? Do it. You can do whatever you want to do as long as you adhere to what the Messiah commanded. All the rest of this stuff, don't get caught up in none of this stuff. Don't get caught up in how something look, how somebody act, how somebody talk, unless it offends the commandments. That's it. If it if it offends the commandments, that's what you judge by. But do not get caught up in talking about all this other ancillary side stuff, man. This stuff is a distraction and be having us arguing about stupid stuff. I be online. I be online too much is my problem. I see all the stupid stuff these people be arguing about. It's just like, what are y'all even talking about? None of this stuff got anything to do with the word. Like, yeah, he's unrighteous, 
But we ain't even talking about his unrighteousness. You, we just talking about all this. We talking about how stuff look. Now, I can't believe a brother, you know what I'm saying, have his wife standing behind him. Who cares where a man have his wife? That's his wife. Whatever situation they got worked out, it's they darn business. Does he preach the word? Here, talking about all this stupid stuff all day. Keep going. That's the end of the chapter. Therefore, you shall see, you shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. This is uh this is uh Jeremiah. We left Jeremiah 27. Go to Jeremiah 28. It's Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 1. And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, which was in Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Watch Israel, it. saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon, now, look, you have to put it in context. You have yoke. Remember the yoke that's on uh, Jeremiah next, right? And that's what Jeremiah prophecy was, that all nations are under the yoke of Babylon. That was his prophecy just one chapter ago, right? In chapter 27, that's what we just read. So now you got Hananiah. Ain't it Hananiah? Yeah. So now you got Hananiah, who's a, who, who's a supposed prophet. He presented himself as a prophet, and he coming around... And he say, I've broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. In other words, he's lifted the Israel. He's saying that God has lifted the Israelites out of bondage. He's brought us to peace. Right? Watch his prophecy. Watch this. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, says the Lord. For I will right? The of the so you remember, Babylon. all the captives went into Babylon. The king of Babylon took them. And you remember, he took some of the vessels. So this, this supposed prophet, Ananias, is saying, in two years, I'm going to turn all that thing around. I'm bringing everybody back home. And I'm bringing the vessels back home. That's the prophecy he's giving. He's saying, I heard from God. God said he's going to do this. Jeremiah just got done saying, yo, Every nation going to be under the king of Babylon's yoke, right? So now these two prophets that both prophesying as if they heard from God are at conflict. Keep going. Watch this. Jeremiah also gave a timeline with his prophecy read two weeks ago. It wasn't two years. That's right. He said 70 years. Then the prophet Jeremiah said, unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and in the presence of the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen, the Lord do so. The Lord right? So look what he said. He said, look, amen. He said, so be it. You know what I'm saying? I hope the most high God do it. He said, the Lord do so. He said, I hope you would do it. Right? Watch this. The Lord perform thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Nevertheless, hear thou now the word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. Mm -hmm. The prophets that have been the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right. So he said, "Listen, I hope what you're saying is true. However, you should listen to what I gotta say." He said, all the prophets that came before you and came before me, oh, man, they all prophet, prophesied to many countries and many kingdoms. And they prophesied of what? They prophesied of, of, of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right? He said, they always talking about negativity. <laughs> he was always being a gloom and doom preacher. Right? They always talking about war and evil and pestilence. What else? 
the prophet which prophesies of peace when the word of that prophet shall come to pass then shall that prophet be known that the lord has truly sent him so what jeremiah is saying if a prophet pop out and the first thing they talking about is hey everything's gonna be great he's saying that doesn't fit the pattern of all the prophets that came before he listen he's telling you all the prophets that we know of that are real prophets them boys always talking about war and evil and pest, uh, pestilence. He said, listen, if a prophet come around and they talking about it's peace and everything going to be OK, then let's consider him a prophet only after what he says actually happens. That's logical. You have to understand that when the book is talking to you, it is logical. Don't have these people to believe in. You know what I'm saying? How you believe in this? Some hocus pocus that. Oh, well, the Bible just will never make sense. That's a lie. It's logical. It makes sense. Most of our God ain't asking us to do nothing that don't make sense. This stuff is all logical. He's telling you, listen, if you telling me good things, if all the prophets came before talking about bad stuff and you telling me something good, then I'm going to wait until the good thing happened before I say, OK, he's a prophet because everybody else always telling me something bad. Keep going. Watch this. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. And right, Hananiah, so he took the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck and he ended up breaking it. Watch this. And, Jer and Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. It's then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet after Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but now shall, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon thy neck of all of these nations, and they that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, and I will and I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in the lie. Therefore, says the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against Yahuwah. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. All right. So the Most High God, because he is a false prophet and he went directly up against the Most High God's prophet, most our God came back and told me, like, yeah, go tell Hananiah that you're going to die this same year since you taught rebellion to the Most High God. Most High God telling people to do something and you standing in the way of it, pretending like he's talking to you. It's lying. Right? But that's what we deal with. We deal with prophets and people that speak as if they're speaking and represent the Most High God and they are lying. And I get it. It sometimes sounds convincing. It sounds like something that you want to hear. Sound like it's real. It don't it sound innocent. That's what it's meant to sound like. But a lot of these people are lying. And there's only one way. I'm not telling you to look at everybody and call them a liar because I'm telling you a lot of people lie. All I'm telling you is you need to make sure everything that you hear, everything that you believe, everything that you follow after lines up with the book. Don't get confused by nothing else that you see. Don't get confused by nobody ripping some yoke off of somebody's neck and breaking it, right? That's one thing. The word is another thing. That's it. You got to look at people according to the word. If they offend the word, then they're out of there. It ain't no reason to trust it. It don't make no sense. Somebody to come to you talking about, hmm, yeah, God told me I should have done that. That's crazy to hear that statement and to look at that person as if they're a godly person. A lot of us ain't never heard God speak to us, but I bet you one thing, a righteous man, if he do hear God speak, he going to do what he say. And he ain't about to sit here just casually talk about how he didn't do it, even if he didn't do it. I knew I should not. It'll be like, oh, I repent. You know what I'm saying? Most like God told me to do X, Y, and Z, and I didn't. He people be lying their darn tongues off. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. So he made the yoke worse. That's right. Also, the word iron, uh, the wood to the iron yoke, 
That's saying the burden will be worsened. That's exactly what it's saying. Well, not necessarily worsened. He's saying that. So what he did is he took he took Hananiah. So you got to kind of take a picture of like Hananiah and uh, Jeremiah standing in the same place. Jeremiah is walking around, you know what I'm saying, constantly with this yoke on him because he's reminding the people that Babylon is about to take over everything, right? So Jeremiah just walking around like this with this yoke on him like that, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know what I'm saying, you got Hananiah to come by and he prophesying. They all right in front of the temple, right, in front of all the priests. So Hananiah is like, no, nah, it's going to be peace. Most High God is going to remove the, the, the yoke from uh, our necks. He's going to bring all the artifacts back and he's going to bring the people back, right? So then Jeremiah looking like out of his yoke, he looked like, well, listen, all the prophets that came before me talked about evil. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to consider you a prophet only after what you say, if it's true. So in other words, we're going to wait two years before we know if you a prophet or not, right? So then after that, Hananiah came over to Jeremiah and he snatched the yoke off of his neck and then broke it. And then Hananiah said, just like I just broke that yoke off of Jeremiah's neck, that's the same way that the Most High God is going to break the yoke in two years off of Israel's neck, right? So because of that, the Most High God gave another word to Jeremiah and Jeremiah came back and said, oh, you broke one of wood, but no, it's a yoke of iron that I'm putting around everybody's neck, not just Israelites, all the nations. And the, ba the king of Babylon is going to run. So what it really represented that when he said iron, it represented that ain't nobody going to be able to break it. You know what I'm saying? Like Han he just telling Hananiah that, that your similitude, the similitude that you tried to create and make it seem like I told you to do it, it ain't valid because that don't accurately represent, you know what I'm saying, how, how breakable this yoke is. The yoke that I'm putting around ain't breakable like that. It would be like having a yoke of iron, right? Then after that, this is the coldest part. So how long Hananiah say it was going to be before, uh, before uh, the Most High God turned everything around? Two years. He said two years, didn't he? So the coldest part is the Most High God sent more words to Jeremiah and tell him, oh, Hananiah, you're going to die in how long? Same year. He said within the year, your butt going to die. Right? So the original response from Jeremiah before he had the word to God he just heard Hananiah speaking. His first response was, look, I hope what you're saying is true. Like, we would all love for what you're saying to be true. But that's different from what the Most High God didn't tell me. So we're going to have to wait until after it comes true for you to be known as a prophet. So that means you would have to wait two years. So the Most High God came back to Hananiah like, well, you're going to die within a weird year. In other words, we ain't, you ain't even going to live long enough to see if what you're going to say is going to come true. Your butt dying right away. So he died within the darn year, right? But that's how the Most High God do it with, you know what I'm saying, when he got a prophet that's giving out good information and somebody withholding, you know what I'm saying, they, they standing in front of it right away. He's swift with that judgment. There's a lot of liars that stand in the way of, uh, of uh, truth right now, you know what I'm saying, but we also don't have prophets. Right? There's a lot of people that say they prophet. These people ain't no darn prophet. I ain't seen one darn, I ain't seen one person stand up to know, you know what I'm saying, the whole nation and prophesy something to them in the name of the Most High God, in the name of Yahuwah, in a way that lines up with the scripture. Right? These people ain't no prophets. But there will be a prophet, right? There will be prophets. And when those prophets come, we got to be able to identify them. There's going to be false prophets and there's going to be real prophets. And the only way we're going to be able to properly identify all this wild stuff that's about to be happening is if we line it up with the book. We can't let nobody confuse us about what's politically correct or what's not. These people, I have conversations with these people all the time about the book. Well, don't you think that the Bible puts women in a place of, I don't care what you think the Bible is saying about women. It's right. So let's first start there. Whatever the book say is right. Now, everything else, y'all got to figure out. Y'all got to figure out, right? If your brain is warped into thinking that, because a man takes a responsibility of the woman, takes responsibility for a woman, that that puts her in a negative spot, then that's your board brain. I can't argue that for you. If you feel like that's wrong, then serve another God. Go do whatever you got to do. But that's what the books say, and we stand on it.
right? We stand on that now. We think that's righteous. We think it's appropriate for a man to have to take the penalty of his woman. Uh, we think, us personally, we think, we think it's appropriate for a man to be a head. We think it's appropriate for the father to have to take care of his daughter until she get married. Right? For us, that's righteous. For us, that makes sense. But if y'all look at that and be like, oh, the woman ain't got enough choice, that's your war brain because the book ain't never said that. Book ain't never said that thing. When Jacob went to go get his wife, when, when, when Jacob went to go get his wife, right? Uh, I'm not, not Jacob, Isaac. When Isaac went to go get his, uh, uh, what was Isaac's wife's name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, right? Went to go bring Rebecca when, Isaac, when Isaac went to go, or when, yeah, when, uh, when, uh, when Abraham sent his servant to go get Isaac's wife, right? He found Rebecca. And he is like, mm, it's the one. It's the one. Yeah, I think she uh she came out, watered it, you know what I'm saying, gave his gave his sheep some water, gave his flock some water, you know what I'm saying, and you know what I'm saying, and gave him some water. He is like, it's the one. He gave her some jewelry, you know what I'm saying, took her back, you know what I'm saying? She went to Laban, her brother, and went to uh her father, I forget his name. Father, her father and her mom, uh Nahor. Well, it was Nahor's descendant. Yeah, it's uh I forget his name. I forget his name. Took but uh, went to both of them and they talked. And I don't know if y'all remember, but Laban and Pops wanted her to stay. They were looking like, no, nah, they told they told the they told the servant, Abraham's servant, they were looking like, why don't you uh why don't you chill for a little bit? You know what I'm saying? But I think they said 10 days or something like that. They were like, why don't you, you know, why don't you chill for a little bit, hang out a little, a little longer? And he's like, no, nah, I gotta get back to my master. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get back to my business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, well, why don't we ask her? Right? They wanted her to stay. But guess who made the decision that she was leaving? Rebecca. They asked Rebecca, like, man, do you want to stay or do you want to go? Rebecca like, no, nah, I'm leaving. Got up out of there. Right? That's our brain and that's y'all brain that be thinking that women didn't have no choice. People look at it because a father gives his daughter's hand in the marriage. You know what I'm saying? They look at that like, Oh, well, she probably didn't even want to. That's y'all brain to say that. You'll never read that in the book. You'll never read one time in the book that a father gave his, his daughter in the marriage and she didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be married. You ain't going to read it. That's our brain that create that scenario. It's just the father that has to represent it because he can any vow that she gives, he has the authority to annul it. So that's why he has to give her give her in the marriage. That's why the husband has to make the decision because they have the authority to annul it. They have the authority to be like, no, that vow is a bad vow. She's not going to uphold that. And they could just kill it because they got that authority and they're responsible for it. But that ain't the same as saying that she don't get no choices. That ain't the same as saying that, that, that she don't get to make the decisions. Right? So these people got to deal with that stuff. I'm not about to hear and argue with people about if you, I want you to just know what the truth is. And once you know what the truth of the book is, you make whatever decision. I, I think it's appropriate if a person look at it and they be looking like, oh, no, nah, the Bible ain't for me. I think that's honest and appropriate. The Bible ain't for a, a lot of these people that be acting like they believe it. If you had to believe the Bible the way it's written, man, 90 percent of these people that say they believe the Bible wouldn't have nothing to do with it. It's just that people don't make them. They don't make them believe it the way it's written. They can believe whatever they want to believe. They can believe that God love everybody, and no matter what you do, you still gonna get it. They think heaven. it's all opinionated. They think everything yeah. is opinionated. I try to tell them like, yo, this book is like all facts. You know what I'm saying? You can't walk up yeah. in here with no opinion. Like two plus two is four, bro. That's not my opinion of two plus two. That's what it is. So when you reading this book, it, what he say is what it is. Like this stuff is fact. It ain't no opinion. It ain't. I think it's this or I think it's that. Yeah, talking about what you don't think when it comes to the Bible, you better not. Don't get me started, man. Anyway, any questions? Do we got any questions? Feminism is so overrated. Yeah, these people, them, the feminism is nuts. These people are crazy. They be saying some wild stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some crazy stuff. These people have you, these people have you in your mind thinking, thinking. <laughs> these people got a lot of these people running around thinking a crime is being done to a woman. Who can't kill the baby in her stomach. Right? They think that the woman has they 
they think her rights has been taken away. Right? The woman's rights are removed because she's not legally able to have an abortion. That is a crazy thought. It's just it's just nuts, but that's how warped. That's how that's how many lies we've believed to where our brain thinks having an abortion, be it having the ability to have an abortion is the right thing to do. Like that's how it should be. Rather than hmm Maybe I shouldn't be laying down with these men or maybe I shouldn't be laying down with these women. A man, the man got the mind to cry that, man, I told her I didn't want to have a baby and she had it anyway. And I still got now she can put me on child support. That's not fair. Right. Yo, we our brain is so warped that we think the part that's not fair is the fact that we got to pay child support for a baby that we didn't want to move forward with. We don't think it's warped. That I laid down with this woman, took a risk. Think about it, right? Think about it. Flip it. If you plan around doing stuff that bling, brings you pr pleasure, that could, if done improperly, or properly, depending on how you see it, but if done, could lead to life, could lead to creating a life. So you're having pleasurable things that could accidentally lead to life, right? Let's make it the op opposite. Let's say you're doing something pleasurable that then could lead to death, right? An example of something that might be fun or pleasurable that could lead to death, right? Driving a car. Driving a car, you listening to a whole bunch of music and you vibing now, not paying attention and you crash and kill somebody, right? Accident, you didn't mean to do it. You knew it was dangerous, the way you were driving, the what you were trying to do, you speed racing, whatever, but you didn't mean to kill somebody. Can you at some point just stop and be like, man, I didn't want it to go this far. You know what I'm saying? Why should I have to be responsible for who I just killed? That wasn't my intention. I was just trying to have a little fun. If it don't work when somebody's dying, why would it work when you're bringing life into the world? And why do you feel like at any point when you see life is starting to be brought into the world that you could just abort it? You could just say, oh, no, nah, I changed my mind. No, nah, you took the risk. You took the risk of jumping around, playing around, laying around with these girls. Be a darn man. Take care of the darn woman that you laid down with and take care of the baby that you created. These people, the, our minds are so messed up. And it makes us so weak in the mind. Everything we doing, everything we looking for is just, how do I make life work for me and easy for me? I told my sons this morning, you know what I'm saying? Ask me, you know what I'm saying? Because they stay home from school. Silly darn bus. Right? The world, like the world have us wired into thinking, how can I make life easier for me? I don't want to go through this. It's tough. You, we can't, none of us can have that expectation in our mind. Our expect, expectation can't be, how do I, how do I, how do I, like, I should get what may, what's more enjoyable to me. No, our expectation got to be sacrifice, work, hard work, sacrifice. That's what get us something. That's what get us something paid in the end, right? If I make a sacrifice today, I get to reap the benefits tomorrow. That is the way that life is supposed to work. The rest of this stuff is lies, right? The rest of, the rest of this stuff is lies. If you, let's take it to the basics of plants, right? If I want an apple, I have to take an apple seed. I have to put it in the ground. I have to water it and water it again and water it again. And an apple tree ain't going to grow for like three years. That is a sacrifice that I got to make for like three years before I ever get one apple. But guess what? If I do that, I don't even have to water the tree no more. Like once the tree is grown, I don't even have to water the tree no more. Guess what? Apples will continuously grow from that tree. Based off of three years of sacrifice, I might have the rest of my life of having apples on that tree. That is how real life works. All the rest of this stuff where you just think you should wake up and just walk into it. 
You ain't got to lose nothing. You ain't got to sacrifice nothing. You don't have to give up nothing. Life should just be perfect for you. Man, stuff never work out for me. It's not supposed to work out. You supposed to take a loss. You supposed to sacrifice. The reason why nothing never work out, because you always looking for stuff to work out perfectly. So you never take the you never take the right route. You always taking shortcuts. Of course, it's never going to work out. All right. Any questions? Seriously. Yes. No? Did we get any questions in the chat? Feminism overrated. Only believe in abortion. Rape. That's too much like right, yeah. All right. No questions? All right. Well, let's pray out. Gotta make sure I turn this thing off. They be telling me I'll leave it on.